Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I know it has been a minute and I am so sorry for that. Um, I will explain more in a little bit. Today, we're gonna do a really cool one. Um, it kind of looks like a cameo brooch um, that you might see like a profile of a beautiful lady's face in white. Um, it, I'm not even sure, ivory, it might be made of ivory. Um, I guess I should have done my research. But uh, yeah, instead of doing a beautiful profile of a woman's face, we're going to do a white rose. And we're gonna do it in Rachel's Rock style. So there will be glitter, there will be gold, and hopefully an interesting video for you guys to watch. <laughs> so find something circular, or you can use a compass like I did to create a circle on my stone in the center as much as I could possibly see with my eyes. Um, it's kind of an oval shaped stone and it's going to get very dark when I resin it so I am priming it with two coats of white paint. Now I'm just brushing it on with a brush right now to get a more accurate, um, get it close up to my circle as much as possible. And then I'm going to use a sponge uh, from Martha Stewart. It's a sponge dauber and I'm going to sponge out all of those paint lines and I will do like a thick coat of that and then let it dry. So that's what I'm doing now. I get these Martha Stewart sponge daubers on Amazon in Canada and also Michael's in Canada. Um, they're amazing and I will leave a link in the description. They're worth every penny, I promise you. And just rinse them out after you're done using them. Don't let the paint dry on them or they're ruined. So now that my white paint is dry, I'm going to use Ink Spot. It's a nice deep blue, it's amazing. So you're going to like this color if you have it. Um, if you don't, you can use any color of blue that you want. Um, just make sure that you're able to kind of keep it dark. So make sure it's a nice dark blue. So I'm going all the way around the edge just with my fine lining brush for now just so that once again, I kind of keep my circle and I don't sponge all over the place and make a mess of things. Um, I kind of do it like I did uh, as a child with a coloring book where I outline it and then color it all in on the inside. It just made it easier for me to not go outside the lines. Um, but you do you guys, you do you. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to sponge this in just the same way I did with the white using my sponge dauber. You can see my big old hand in the way. Um, and I'm just making sure there's a nice even coat of that ink blue on there. And then I will be lightening it up with a little bit of Folk Art Aqua. And I will make sure to list all of these paints in the description, I promise. So there we go. Got a nice even layer, as far as I can tell. Nothing's perfect. You can still see a little bit of white, but I'm not worrying about that. Uh, we're going to be outlining, so we're going to clean it up, all those edges. So uh, now I'm just kind of trying to uh, lighten the center using a little bit of aqua. And I'm using the same sponge that I was using for the blue, so I just kind of dried it off on my towel a little bit. And now I'm just lightening the center. Lightening, light, lightning, <laughs> thunder and lightening the center. So yeah, just kind of a little bit, just to give it some some uh, depth. I don't even know which words I wanna use. I just know how I feel about it. <laughs> so now that I've let it dry, I'm gonna put some hologram 2796, which has like this gorgeous teal diamond-like sparkle to it and I haven't used it in a while and I've missed it very, very much. So I thought it would be nice for us to all use it together. So I'm just making sure there's a nice even layer everywhere of the blue sparkles. You can also go over it with a sponge, uh, just like I did with the blue and the white, to make sure that your glitter is all evenly dispersed throughout the, the blue area. Totally up to you. I'm just using a paintbrush. Um, the glitter, actually looks pretty good once it's dry anyway. So now here we go with some white. We're going to do this rose and you might want to slow down the video. I'm just gonna try and do some white 
petals. I'm starting with a little center loop. And now I'm gonna do petals. I do the outer edge again and then fill it in. Just like I did with the, the white part and then the blue part, I go around the outside and then I fill it in. And depending on where you put your little petals, it will start to look like a rose. Now I do recommend you practice your rose with pencil um, or really slow this down so that you can like follow me step by step with everything. I only recommend that because I don't want you to mess up your beautiful sparkling blue background. So practice a couple times on paper to see how you want your rose to look because I tell you, I have messed mine up many a times and I've had to start over so many times. Um, so I'm gonna give you guys a heads up. You might hear my cat, Max. He's my gorgeous black cat and he sometimes gets mouthy with me. So if I'm not paying attention to him, he might yell a little bit. So I'm just giving you guys a heads up. This is the way life goes here <laughs> on Rachel's Rocks. Um, so yeah, I'm just kind of putting little random petals. Try and keep a space. You can see that I didn't in some areas, but try and keep a space between all your petals. You wanna still see that blue come through. There's Max talking now. I'm gonna try and let him out one moment, guys. There we go. So make sure your white is nice and thick. Um, my white, when it dries, it tends to crack a little bit because it's super, I don't know if it's old or if it's just the kind of paint that I use. Um, it does crack. Let me know if you guys have that issue with any of your paint brands and if you know how I can fix it. Um, so basically I'm going to be covering up my cracked white paint with some nice pearl paint and you're not even going to notice the cracks. Um, so, but I'll show you that paint afterwards. So I'm okay with the petals. Um, there's quite a few of them. <laughs> um, you don't have to do as many petals. You could do larger petals and less of them. It's totally up to you. You can do two of them. You can do a little rosebud off to the side. Um, you don't have to do it exactly like mine. I'm just kind of here to guide you and see, I wasn't happy, so I'm still adding <laughs> more petals, but you don't have to make yours just like mine. You, you do you once again. Um, so now I'm going to do some little doodads. You give me the name because on, honestly, my mind is not working. I, there's so much going on over the last couple of weeks in my household that I am not even able to think. <laughs> I'm telling you guys are lucky to get this tutorial. <laughs> um, I have another one coming out too, but you guys were, some of you were like, ah, I'm sick of the foils, I'm sick of the foils. So uh, I, I did this one, no foils, but there is a foil one coming for those of you who are getting the hang of it and love it and want more. Um, so there is a nice one coming. Uh, very, very soon that I've already recorded. I just have to do some editing and some narrating and then I can bring it for ya. Um, but for now, this one will tide you over. So I've done like little hairy leaves. They look kind of hairy. Um, I kind of like them mystical and not so realistic looking. Um, so yeah, they're a little hairier than your standard rose leaf. <laughs> but once again, I'm just doing what I like to do. So you do you. Um, so now, now that my white is dry, I'm going to use a pearl white from Folk Art. It is literally number 659 pearl white and it's just pearl. And I'm going to use a little disposable eyeliner brush that I got from Amazon. I will leave the link in the description for that as well. Um, yeah, you guys can pick up like 200 for a very small amount of money and they work amazing for little areas and fine lining if you if you struggle with um, any fine lining and stuff like that. I use them constantly. They're amazing. And they come, of course, like with little plastic covers so you can reuse it and it doesn't get all bent and fluffy. Um, so I am just going on the inside. I'm keeping the outer edge 
the matte acrylic paint. Um, but I'm just kind of going on the inside, not all the way out to the edge, with the pearl paint. Now, if your pearl paint looks better than this, be thankful because my pearl paint kind of leaves like little brush strokes and little lines everywhere. But in the end, I still really liked how it looked. Um, but I'm trying to give it like a textured look by only filling in the inner area of each petal and keeping the outsides just that matte white. But you get creative. You definitely don't have to do just a white rose. You can do whatever you want. Um, there's lots of things that you can can put in there. Um, I'm not even sure if you guys know what it is that I'm trying to do here, this little cameo thing. Um, but I believe it's like antique jewelry. And if anybody knows anything more about cameo um, brooches or anything like that, please feel free to comment in the uh, comment section and give us all some lessons on this stuff because I think it's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, I am literally just going from each petal and filling in the inner area with the pearl. And then we're going to do some gold work around the outside. We're going to keep it kind of simple, um, but you can do more intricate detail if you like. Um, but yeah, we'll just see how it goes. So the news that I have is super exciting. Oh, I finally, after 43 years of being on this earth, have bought a house. My husband and I have bought our first home and it is something I cannot even explain how important this is to us. Um, I was moved around a whole lot as a child. Um, and no, I wasn't like, um, it wasn't because I was like an army kid or anything like that, or a Navy kid or anything. I'm, I'm not, I was, my mom liked to move around a lot. So it was really difficult. And since I was a child, I have craved somewhere that I just kind of can plant my feet. So tomorrow, or today, depending on when you're seeing this video, the 14th of August, we take possession of our first home. So I am like dying with anticipation, butterflies. I have, I am covered in a stress rash <laughs> for the first time in my life, actually second. Um, but yeah, apparently my body does not like stress right now and it's reacting. So it's been a very stressful couple of weeks. I've been super busy. It was a fast closing. And yeah, um, I don't know when I'm going to be able to take a breather. So um, I'm very excited. And I'm also excited to be able to share with you guys because you guys mean the world to me. And believe it or not, every single one of you, even just watching my videos on YouTube, giving me a thumbs up on Facebook or you know, sharing, sharing a picture of one of my rocks, you guys have helped me. So I just want to thank you and my husband and my children also want to thank you for supporting me and my channel and just being so damn kind to me. Um, and, and sticking by me through this pandemic as well. So I just want to thank you guys from the bottom of my heart. Um, this is the happiest I've ever been and I'm trying not to cry, um, but I want to share it with you guys. So it is all happening tomorrow. And if you're able to see uh, any pictures on my Facebook, it will be of uh, a sold sign. <laughs> Hopefully, if everything goes the way it's supposed to tomorrow, um, I'm feeling blessed and feeling very thankful. And I'm hoping to continue to bring some beautiful creations to you guys. Um, I hope there's not uh, too much of a pause between when I'm moving and everything and the next time I get to post a tutorial. Um, really hoping that you guys don't have to wait too long. Um, but I just want you to know I love you and I'll be back soon and that I'm doing very well. I'm very happy. And hopefully I will share some of that with you guys as well. Uh, you guys can see my home. So what I've done is I've outlined my beautiful rose while I'm letting that pearl paint dry. I've outlined it in gold. 
So just a nice fine line of gold. I'm trying to keep it even. I did have to fix a little bit because I went onto the blue too far, um, but you can do that. Just let it dry a little bit and you can fix it all yourself. So another thing I like to do with these sponges is make circles because <laughs> once again, I cannot make a circle all on my own. So uh, I use it to sponge on a circle and then I can work with that circular area a little bit later. So I'm using um, that size for that one right on the very top and bottom. And then I'm gonna use a smaller sponge to make two smaller circles on either side, like you can see now. Um, you'll be able to see it much better very soon. It's not gonna look like that uh, in a few minutes, but it's just one of the tricks I can show you to make little circles. Now I'm using a dotting tool and I'm going along the sides of those circles to make smaller circles and I'm just going to make a couple more and just gradually make them smaller as they go down the side of the circle. hope this is making sense because it really just sounds like I'm just saying circle a million times. <laughs> uh, it might have something to do with my mind being loopy after the last couple of weeks. Um, we've kept it very secret as well. We haven't told anyone. No one knows except for, well, I told my my hairstylist today when I got my hair cut. <laughs> I told her. Um, we've just kept it very, very quiet. Um, something we've been working towards very hard. And yeah, we did it. And we didn't want to tell anyone just in case something fell through. Um, but we're... We're ready to announce it tomorrow, hopefully, or today, whichever day is the 14th. I keep forgetting. I don't know when I'm posting this. It might be after midnight. <laughs> All right, so you can see I did some smaller circles going down the side. There's uh, one, two, three, four, five. After I did the sponge circles, I did five circles with dotting tools. Now I'm going in to that gold circle and I'm filling it in with, I'm priming it again, just like I did with the, the big circle in the center. I'm priming the little circles because they're gonna be blue and I want them to be bright. And I'm gonna do like a little jewel technique on the biggest, the biggest white circles. Um, if you have a hard time with this jewel technique, I do have a tutorial that will help you. Um, it's actually called gemstones or jewel stones. I'm not even sure, but I will post the link in the description and watch that and it will help you to be able to do this part that I'm gonna be doing. It's super easy. Once you get the hang of it, it's so easy. So back to that same colored ink blue. You can do different colors if you want. You can do green, red. It's like a jewel that's sitting in here in this little brooch that's on the rock. So. I'm filling it in with blue and we are going to be going around that with uh, gold again and outlining it so it's nice and cleaned up. It's not fuzzy looking um, like it is now. But basically I do it all one color and then I sponge in a little bit of white on the bottom left or sorry bottom right. And I'm only gonna do it with the big jewel. I'm just gonna leave the other ones regular blue. And then the big jewel is gonna be more of a, a, a gemstone type looking thing. So it'll start to look more like a gemstone in a moment. I am gonna just outloan, outloan. <laughs> See, I got loans on the mind after buying a house. I'm gonna outloan this in gold. <laughs> God help me. Okay, so I'm outlining all of them in gold. And then we're gonna add a little white bloop bloop to the uh, gemstone to kind of give it that gemstone look even more. So I've lightened the bottom, like the light is coming through it. And then I'm adding some little white bloops. That's what they're called here on this channel, guys. Don't expect technical lingo on this channel. See, looks like a little jewel. Love it. I'm keeping the other ones just regular blue, but I'm gonna put a little white bloop on them as well to fake everybody that those are jewels too, but we're not gonna try and sponge in that little space. I'm gonna do the same thing with the top, but this time uh, when I do it, I'm gonna do the lighter area 
from here, well, the way you're looking at it now, I'm going to be doing it on the top left. But really, if you turn the rock around, it's going to be done the same way that the bottom was done. You just got to watch where your light's coming from, from and uh, do them both the same. So these little sponges are super handy, but you don't have to use sponges if you don't have them. I will leave a link in the description for my blending brush, which I use for this kind of thing all the time. It works great if you don't have a sponge. So, oops, I put the white on the wrong spot. I'm gonna have to cover that because <laughs> the light's supposed to be coming through the other way, so I gotta cover that. And now I'm gonna do the top like I told you guys to do it. Oh, man. <laughs> See, Rachel does make mistakes, you guys, all the time. And I'm not afraid to show them to you unless they're like real big mistakes where my cat swiped his tail across my entire rock. Because that almost makes me cry. <laughs> and I don't want you guys to know about that. So, so there. I've now lightened the proper edge of it. And I'm now darkening the bottom right. Because that needs to stay nice and dark blue. So once I get that right, I'm doing the same thing that I did with the other parts. I'm going to surround them with gold again, clean them up, make sure that the gold circle is, is showing all the way around. And literally that um, the sponge just gives us like a guide. So we can clean it up and make it look better. Um, but the sponge gives you that circular effect so that you don't have to work so hard at trying to make it look right. Just a little tip from little old me. So I hope everyone is doing well enjoying the summer months if it's summer where you are it might not be which is something I did not know until my later years in life <laughs> I did not know that some people have summer in the winter time where I'm having winter they're having summer I had no idea it's fascinating to me so I've done the same thing top and bottom look pretty much the same nothing's perfect um, we are going to resin it and it's going to look amazing. So I'm just going to let it dry and then I'm going to seal it. Once again, it is going to go super dark because resin will make it darken right up. If you have a stone, um, run it under water and see how dark it gets. Peekaboo. Peekaboo. <laughs> uh, I'm in love. Look at that. Look at that hologram. Guys, if you didn't fall in love with this, I don't know what else to do. I don't know what else to do. This is gorgeous. You can do this in other colors. You can do whatever you want. You don't have to do a rose. If this doesn't look like a rose, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but either way, guys, I'm glad I was able to share this with you uh, at a very special time in my life. Um, I love you. I miss you. Keep painting. And thank you once again for all your lovely comments and all of your support. I will see you very, very soon. Bye, guys.